Hello and welcome. My name's Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. So I have a special treat for you today. We are going to make custom denim jackets. I'm gonna make some that are wedding themed and then if you just wanted to paint on a denim jacket for yourself, I'll have options for you as well. So I'm gonna use a product that you might have seen me use before if you've been around here for a while, but if you haven't, you're going to love it. Now, this video is sponsored by Testers. However, all projects and opinions are my own. And we are going to use Testers fabric paint. It is fabric paint in a spray can. So we're gonna do cut a stencil with our Cricut machine. I ironed it on because we're gonna cut it from freezer paper, which makes it super simple. And then you just spray it with the spray paint and it's permanent. It's so easy to use and I really think you're gonna love it. So first of all, let's take a look at all the supplies we're going to use. The supplies you're gonna need are as follows. So I'm gonna use Tester's Craft Fabric Spray Paint. So this spray paint is amazing for fabric. One coat application, you don't have to heat set it. Dries in 30 minutes, cures in three hours, washable in three days. Amazing product and makes stenciling on fabric super easy. So I am going to use a couple of denim jackets, some painter's tape, light grip Cricut mat, freezer paper, which cuts with the fine point blade on any Cricut machine, and then you'll need some sort of iron to apply your freezer paper to the surface. So now let's head to Cricut Design Space and take a look at which designs work best for the stenciling method. Let's talk about the designs that will work best with stenciling and which designs don't work so well. So I have a few designs on my canvas already. So let's say I really love this floral design here. I really want to put it on a stencil. I wanna talk about what happens when I do that. So I'm going to put a shape behind it to illustrate what will happen. So I'm just gonna put a square on the shape, pick both the shape as well as the floral design and do slice. Then I can move some of these out of the way. I'll just delete these off. And now you can see what the stencil will look like. So it will cut this middle floral portion out of our stencil material, which in this case is freezer paper. And what will happen is this outside edge will be one piece, but you have all these little small pieces on the inside that will not come with your stencil. So that really doesn't make it a stencil, it's just a flower piece cut out of a piece of paper, and all these little pieces would have to be placed individually. So you might use this with something like vinyl, and you could transfer the whole design. But when we're talking about stenciling, you really don't wanna to have to transfer all those small little pieces. So let's look at designs that do work better for this process. So this is actually a stencil file, and then this is actually two fonts that are intended for stenciling. So the center of the R is connected to the rest of the outside design, so it would not be left behind and it would be a part of the stencil. These are both images within Cricut Design Space and I can customize these to work with my denim jacket. So in this case, I would probably resize this. I would probably use the contour feature to remove some of these cuts and then I would cut it from my freezer paper. This, I would just resize it, cut it from my freezer paper and I'm ready to go. So let me go ahead and resize these and then we'll head to our Cricut machine and cut stencils for two different denim jackets. Freezer paper is the only thing that will work with this method and you want to put it shiny side down on the mat and do not mirror your design in Cricut Design Space. You may find that your machine does not have a freezer paper setting. Just use the copy paper setting that is the thinnest and it will cut fine. So now that my machine is ready, I'm going to load the mat and then just cut the design. Once that's done cutting, just remove the mat from the machine. Now let's talk about stenciling. To complete the stencil, you'll just remove all the cut pieces. And because we've chosen the correct design, we can just discard all these cuts. Now you will see that I have my stencil sort of in the middle of my freezer paper. I did move my design to the center of the mat before I cut. I did that so there would be more room around this outside edge in order to protect my fabric. I will still use some painter's tape as well as maybe some copy paper around that outside just to protect the rest of the jacket. So for now, let's remove all these pieces. So now you will want to remove this from the mat and you will want to do that carefully. My best advice is to turn the mat over, then slowly peel the mat back from the material, making sure that you don't rip anything as you peel back. You may have to peel some of these pieces back from the mat as you go along, but you want your stencil to be removed in one piece. 
Then you'll want to locate your stencil on your jacket. I also pressed the jacket beforehand just to make sure there weren't any wrinkles. Then I'm just using these seams on the jean jacket to sort of align my stencil, make sure it's in the center, and make sure it's straight. Once I like the location, I can start pressing it into place. I do already have the jacket and the stencil on a piece of cardboard. This is so I can lift the entire thing up and head outside. The freezer paper will stick long enough for you to spray paint, but it is a very weak hold. So you don't want to move the jacket at all once you press it down, which is why I like adding the cardboard now. And then all you do is press literally for a few seconds in each location. And that is enough to press that freezer paper into place. Your freezer paper may not stick to things like the seams on the jean jacket. That's okay. We'll just add some painter's tape around the outside edge and that should take care of any areas that don't stick like the seams. So I'm getting all of my letters stuck down first and then I'll stick as much as possible around the outside. Then I'll just add some extra tape around the outside edges as well as maybe some copy paper to cover these edges. You don't want any overspray getting on the other areas of your jacket, so it's best to cover up as much as possible. Then once this is covered up, we'll just head out and spray paint. So you do wanna use this at room temperature, like 70 degrees Fahrenheit is great, and humidity below 65%. I like to use it outdoors when it's warm. Be sure to shake the can vigorously before you use and reshake it often during application. I like to apply it straight up and down over the top of my stencil. Keep your spray can six to 12 inches away from your work and spray using a continuous motion. I like to apply the spray paint in a few light coats a few minutes apart, two to three coats a few minutes apart and your project will be perfect. Then once it's done, allow it to dry to the touch. It dries to the touch in less than 30 minutes. You can handle it within three hours and it's washable after three days of curing. It does dry soft to the touch, which is one reason I love Tester's Craft Fabric Spray Paint. So now we're back inside and I wanted you to see the coat that I went with. So I went with several very light coats because I kind of wanted a worn look to the jacket. If you wanted more of a white look, I'll peel this off in a minute and you'll see how white it is. If you wanted more of a white look, you would just continue adding very light coats, layering them one on top of one another. Now this is ready to come off. I've allowed it to dry like five to 10 minutes just so it's not super soaking wet. So any of these areas, like the, it was kind of pooling here because that's kind of where I stopped with my strokes, that area would kind of run if you picked it up right away. So I have let it dry a little while and now we're gonna carefully remove it from the jacket. So you can just start lifting this up. The freezer paper does not stick well enough to your fabric that it won't peel up. So it will just sort of peel off at this point. So I'm to the freezer paper now and you can see it just peels right off and your stencil comes right off. And you can see the look I was going for was white, yes, but still where you could tell it was a jean jacket. So now you can see I have my stencil off, but there are a few pieces that remained on. They just sort of ripped. Tweezers are great to sort of grab those and just peel them up and discard them. Remember, it dries to the touch in less than 30 minutes to handle within three hours and washable within three days. So we've carefully removed the stencil and now we'll just allow it to dry at least three hours before handling it and make sure we wait three days before throwing it in the laundry. All right, so if you noticed a change in those scenes where I was spray painting, I made several versions of these jackets so that I could get the best technique for you. So my best technique, tips and tricks. Iron on your freezer paper really, really well. Make sure it's down. Cover the entire rest of the jacket with something like butcher paper, copy paper, scrap, any kind of paper you have on hand. Cover the entire surrounding area so none of the overspray gets on your jacket and cover it well. So I found that if I didn't tape down those extra pieces around the outside, that some of the paint got under my tape and in other areas of my jacket where I didn't want it to. And then I went over the spraying procedure, but I tried several methods and the best procedure is to say six to 12 inches from your surface, light, light coats, several light coats a few minutes apart so go over with a light coat, make sure you overspray over the stencil on both sides or up and down either direction that you wanna go. Wait a few minutes, come back and do another coat. Wait a few minutes, come back and do another coat. And like I said, I liked best when I stopped 
and it still had like a blue jean look to the project. So this is my one that is for weddings. So it says future misses on it. And I love, love, love the way that it turned out. Then I made another version with just a floral design, sort of on the upper back. And I think this is perfect for weddings or if you just wanted a decorated jean jacket to wear yourself. So I personally love this design, but with this method, you can make a custom stencil on your Cricut machine, then grab your tester's fabric spray paint and make anything that you can imagine. So where do you get tester's fabric spray paint? I'm going to link to some sources in the description below. So if you are on computer, click show more below this video. If you're on mobile, click the arrow to expand the description or swipe up in the video depending on how you're watching. Then you'll get a complete supply list, including tester's fabric spray paint and the locations where you can purchase. You can purchase it online, have it delivered to your house and be ready. Now it does come in a ton of colors. I'm using white today, but if you want a different look, to your decorated jean jacket, feel free to pick up one of the other colors because I know you're gonna love every single one. So if you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about making your own jean jackets, either version, feel free to drop down in the comment section and ask away. And if you haven't already, head on over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We have videos like this every single week and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those. So thank y'all so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.